to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Today, Juan Carlos Rodriguez Artigas joins me on the show. Juan Carlos is an accomplished architect and interior designer with extensive experience in high-end hospitality, restaurant, commercial, and residential design. Currently, he serves as design director of the London studio of the global interior architecture firm Wilson Associates, where he oversees the day-to-day operations and projects. In our conversation, you will hear Juan Carlos describe how his mission as design director, in addition to creating beautiful projects, very much includes the responsibility to hire and build a cohesive, talented team. And he is also the rainmaker for the studio. He is cognizant that a large part of his job is finding, meeting, and creating opportunities for new business for the firm. I asked him how he does that, and you'll hear him explain it starts with relationships, with connecting to people. Wilson Associates is a collection of 10 design firms around the world whose work encompasses interior architectural design, architecture, art consultancy, concept development, branding, and food and beverage design. Their portfolio includes some of the most prestigious hospitality projects in the world, and I encourage you to visit their website at wilsonassociates.com. For the sheer design eye candy, I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Okay, now, did you know that all three of our featured show sponsors are international companies as well? That's right. My Doma Studio services you no matter where you are in the world. If you're a designer in the UK, the US, Australia, wherever it is, My Doma Studio is available to help you save time and money with your client management, time tracking, and vendor communications. It's the same with Article.com. Article.com ships their fabulous mid-century furniture for living rooms, offices, and outdoor spaces, both to the U.S. and Canada. And their trade division is led by a team of interior designers available every day to help you find just the right piece for your client. And finally, we have Kravit Inc. With 35 corporate showrooms, 50 agent showrooms, and sales representatives that visit designers just like you all over the world. Have you heard about their new quick ship? Now you can order from an expansive selection of Kravitz smart frames and finishes and have it manufactured in two weeks. Okay. The program includes sofas, sectionals, sleepers, chairs, ottomans, and dining chairs, all available with more than 100 upholstery options in varying textures that boost durability, cleanability, functionality, and style. You heard me say it, right? You heard me say two weeks. So what I want to say is take that online retailers (laughs) before in order to get fast, you had to sacrifice quality. Not anymore. Now you can deliver the custom quality you know you can rely and trust on from Kravit Inc. in just two weeks. So for all three of my sponsors, check them out. Open your trade accounts today and be sure to tell them I sent you. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Juan Carlos. Hi, Juan Carlos. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hello, Luan. Happy to be here. Thank you. So, Juan Carlos, this is a rare opportunity for me. I haven't had the chance to interview 
not only not many uh, high-level hospitality commercial firms before, but also this is a unique firm. You work for Wilson Associates, which is a global firm with 10 offices across the world. And you, as the design director of London, it occurs to me, and this is what I would love to explore a little bit, is that on one hand, you're sort of like the principal of a studio in London, that you're the guy there that's running the show. But then there's this other facet where you have um, not only a support team with you from the all the from the home office and so forth, but also accountability and probably expectations that are different than when you run your own studio. So is is there something you could tell us a little bit about the pro and con of that maybe? Oh, about the, working on a small firm and then jump into a design, on a big firm. Well, uh, well, it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very different. It, it's comforting being under the umbrella of a big corporation like Wilson Associates. So, as you said, this is like starting a startup uh, from from the very beginning, but under the umbrella of a big corporation like Wilson Associates, when you get all the support and the resources that you need to to start a, a new office in a such an exciting city like London, right? Mm, right. And so the office in London opened a year ago, March 2018. So as we're talking, it's just past this one-year anniversary. And you shared with me that it was you were hired, and then one of your first initiatives tasked to you, in addition, I'm sure, to scouting a business, but was to grow your team, to fill in the key p positions that you needed. So can you share with us a little bit about that process of how and what you looked for in team members as you put them on? Because now you're up to four people plus yourself, right? Correct. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey. I mean, I've been um, to build a, a team, as you said, it's about the, to, to get the right team players, right? Um, it's um, you could get their job descriptions and and that's easy to get a senior designer, uh, a project manager. But when you're starting a, a, a team of, of a small uh, a small team, you need to get flexibility on the on the candidate. So there were many candidates that I were interviewing uh, with great portfolio. Don't get me wrong, and um, great experience. And when they saw that the structure was small, they said like, No, no, you know, I probably am not sure if I want to go into that. Where there are other ones, and fortunately, the ones I have were really excited. So like, yes, let's jump into this. Let's start suffering from zero. Uh, let's let's all let's all uh, be um, like rowing on the same direction. And I was very clear with them at the very beginning. Listen, uh, though your job description says that uh, you're a senior designer, they're probably some junior designer task or project management thing that you will need to do. And also on a project management uh, role, tell the, do you have any design skills that uh, you would like to explore that you could think you could help? And yes, yes. And that's how we've been working mm -hmm. and growing and with uh, flexibility. I would say that was the key word to okay. when you start uh, a small office. So what I'm hearing in there is that probably – typically the candidate who let's for example we look on the outside looking at Wilson Associates and we see this multinational firm and we see this body of work and we see this large company so if I'm a designer and I'm attracted and I see that the London office is opening what I'm hearing you say is if I come from a background in hospitality design and I'm accustomed to working in a bigger company, I'm probably also accustomed to, if my job title is this, I'm going to swim in that lane probably 99% of the time as a senior project manager or as a senior designer. But even though that might be the type of candidate that was attracted to you because of all of the external information about Wilson Associates, mm -hmm. when they came to your interview, you're like, right, but we're a startup here. And so everybody has to wear a hat. And some days you're going to do this and some days you're going to do that. And if that's exciting, let's keep talking. And if that's not what you like, then please let's not. Right. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> 
Yeah. Interesting about that, because I could see with the reputation that Wilson Associate has that if I've spent five, six years in hospitality design and I'm maybe in a big company and I see the, um, you know, the, in, the opportunity for Wilson, you know, I might think, OK, they're going to open up shop with 40 people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, no, we're not going to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, we're trying to grow organically. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, uh, depending on the amount of work we, we have, we're trying to grow organically. I think there's I mean. I respect any 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 kind of way of opening an office if you open it with a big team, but I think the best way it's to to do it uh, depending on the amount of work you're getting. That way, um, everybody gets something to do. Nobody gets anxious and nobody gets bored. Right? Mm. There's something to do. So I think it's a uh, it was a good approach, and so far it's been good. It's been working good. Very good, but probably challenging for you because oh, you're, yeah. you're the design director. You got to be designing one day, pitching and trying to get business another day, and then really managing this human resources facet on another part of the day. That's that's a lot of hats to wear. Yeah, as I said, we have the support from Paris office, which has been great, and also New York. But yeah, when you start an, uh, a small office, you need to switch your hats from different mm-hmm. uh, from different, different positions. Though my, my role is a design director, which is the part I really love. But uh, it's been quite a journey and actually really, really exciting year. Uh, exploring those other facets of, uh, mm-hmm. of opening a, a design firm. And you have 15 years experience in the field. So you come with a, a body of work and a level of expertise in order to be the one selected to do this. Tell us something about, um, you know, when your last position, was it also a big company where you were, but worked in that bigger environment or was it in a smaller environment like this too? Like what skill sets did you bring over and what is different for you in this position? Actually, the the um, the design firm was smaller, but since it was uh, an office that it was already established for years, the team and the structure was bigger mm. than than uh, than what I have right now at the okay. beginning. So it's kind of um, yeah um, the, the yeah the design firm was smaller, but the the, the established structure was uh, bigger. Okay. So uh, that's what gave me the 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 skills uh, I guess to to know what are the the key team members you need to have on your structure right. when when you started especially if you have limited resources so okay this senior designer needs to know this and this and that because I don't have five like in another <laughs> so, so. <laughs> right that's that's interesting but you have the you have the roadmap in your mind you know where you're building this out too and you can see how when you put your your first layer in that they are then going to be the building blocks as you grow this team out exactly they're like the foundation Mm. i actually was um looking for the foundation of it well i was sometimes i was uh, involved in interviews on the other firm for different positions and you um you could be more open and flexible uh and this well maybe this this person doesn't have that much skills but it could be developed in time and it will be supported by other team members Mm. whether in this situation that i have right now it's like okay i need someone that's more solid and then we can welcome people that are uh willing to explore and grow but uh, but the very beginning it's really really important to have a a strong a strong uh right. foundation yeah they have to hit the ground running for you there you go yeah mm-hmm. yeah 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 so now and i've been lucky i have to say oh. my team member, my teams are great my oh. team is great that's awesome. So so if we have designers listening, Juan Carlos, that are possibly in a hospitality position now in part of a firm, when you went to look for these people that were in a position to hit the ground running, is mm-hmm. it strictly, is there a bare minimum of, look, you have to have had five years experience in hospitality and, or I can't even talk to you, or is it, is there, is there a, is there a wiggle room and a combination of skill set that could be, um, considered? Cause I'm just like, you know, you know, we have younger designers listening that are going to look at Wilson Associates platform if they were not already familiar with it and think I would love to work with a company like this. So what do you have to have to get in the door? I mean, for a senior position or intermediate position, you definitely need to have a background in hospitality, a stock background in hospitality. I've seen uh, many candidates that have come that have 
beautiful portfolios of residential, which are great. Uh, but you know the, the, there's a huge difference between residential design and hospitality design, and and sometimes uh, you you can you could get those uh, kind of candidates as said when you have a more established structure. But for the first structure, you need to have uh, people that are strong on hospital in an hospitality background for years. Yes, it will be for great. years, for, not a minute yeah. and a half. For years, they need to yeah. be well versed. I mean, especially for seniors' position, maybe for juniors. Mm -hmm. I mean, junior position, it doesn't matter. I mean, if they're willing to jump into this world of hospitality, if they're skilled in in in, in, in computers and they're uh, and they they will like that's great. I mean, oh, and then they will grow their way into into that into into mm -hmm. into the firm and, and and get to the senior but uh yeah for for higher positions i think they should have a strong background on, on on that okay and what is it about the hospitality sector that has attracted you why do you prefer to work in hospitality as opposed to residential juan carlos well i think um residential is a very personal Thing. Mm -hmm. You whether um, hospitality and F and B are are different uh, have different approaches. I would um, as I worked in residential in the past and I loved it. But um, what I like more about um, uh, hospitality is that you're selling experiences and you can mm -hmm. debate with the owner. There's there's a revenue. That's a, a play when you are designing for hospitality, whether in a house, there's not right. There's some the houses are very personal. I would never dare uh, to tell uh, a, a, a person that wants to put a sofa they, they have from from their grandmother in the in their living room and tell them that it's horrible that I'm not going to put it. I would never do that because <laughs> it's a very personal thing. Right. right. Rather, in a hospitality project, you will have the 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 um, obligation to tell your client, listen, if we put that in your restaurant, it might affect the kind of clientele you want to get, and that would be reflected on the revenue. And 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 that's where your clients say, like, hmm, then this guy uh, probably uh, have something to say about it. So I think that's the part I like more about the hospitality, that it's not as personal as, as, as the residential, which is more of a, a personal taste. Okay. And I noticed that there's quite a portfolio for Wilson Associates. I mean, the Hard Rock and some of the finest hotels in the world. When you are describing that experience, when you are in, I guess it's it must be the concept phase or the design phase of it, when... They have you understand their brand, you know, you have a vision of what their brand is and the way that you're going to express that in design. But mm -hmm. whatever level person you're dealing with, whether it's an operations manager or it's whoever, I don't know who in that end of their business deals with the designer. But how how often do you run up against that in hospitality, Juan Carlos, where you really are having to say, Look, I know you love the blue whale on the wall, but that's silly in this space. <laughs> like I don't know what you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, you need to use a lot of psychology into that <laughs> and, and try to explain why that uh, blue big whale is not the most uh, um, convenient thing to have there, mm -hmm. and explain the reasons. And uh, if you have a solid argument on how to do it and without taking it personal um sometimes uh, i mean most of the time people understand okay do you find and i I'm, sometimes i get really down into crazy details and i'm sure people mm -hmm. are like who cares but i need to know this so do you find that when you're working with the counterpart at the hospitality brand that you're building the hotel or the restaurant for, do you find that they are also willing to just say, look, you're the expert. You think that this is going, this sofa, this, this style, this isn't going to attract the right revenue because it's not going to attract the right clientele and they get over it. Or do you have the same sort of things that sometimes happen in residential where that one level person is not seeing your vision and that's the, that's sticking the process up? Or is that just not really happen in hospitality because they're not that emotionally attached to it and they have hired you for your expertise and they're willing to go down the road? 
No, it does happen, mm. and I th- and I think it's a journey uh, that needs to be explored, uh, whether with the design team or even the operational team. I mean, you, you, when you are designing a, a space for uh, an hotel or for a restaurant, you need to take into account all the things that that uh, people from operations are 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 telling you because at the end you're designing for them as well Mm -hmm. it's not it's it's not just designing for the for the person that's going to have a a a dinner there or a lunch you're designing also for the people that work there if if they if if you design a space that's beautiful but doesn't work operationally the staff is going to be mad and and that will be reflected on the service so of course you need to make them part of it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting because we're doing a big hotel project in new york city where we're putting a retractable genius it's called a genius awning and it's actually a rainproof snowproof retractable awning and it's quite literally enabling these we have three going on in hotels in new york city right now it's quite literally enabling them to put this retractable roof over their terrace areas and be able to book those areas for weddings and parties and functions and not have to double book the inside space in case it rains or snows on the day of the event. Can you imagine that? How much more revenue, (laughs) right? So we should probably talk. I should tell you about this product. Um, Of course. Yes, right? Right? It it is amazing. Um, But what's interesting is that as you're describing uh, the relationship with the people who work in the space, um, I am thinking back to the person in charge tasking to contract with us to design this and um, execute them this product for them. It, as it was in production and as we were in installation, the uh, um, head chef got involved mm-hmm. and he uh-huh. said, I need coverage over here because if I have an outdoor party, this is where I have to put an outdoor grilling station or blah, blah, blah. And mm. it was originally overlooked by the operations person. So interesting that you say that, that everybody does have to sort of get involved. And that's your job is what you're saying as the interior designer on the project to make sure that you've covered all the bases. Absolutely. Yeah, you need to make everyone's part of it, the operational design, everything. That's I think that's the secret of a well-designed uh, space mm, that mm-hmm, works well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So tell me, what do you find, well, what's your superpower? We call it a superpower here on the show, Juan Carlos, something that you really say to yourself, I have taken the time and energy to develop this skill, and maybe it is something that comes to you quite naturally, but usually a superpower to me is something that we've also spent intentional time in cultivating expert level at. What do you consider yours? Okay, well, um, I'm talking about my Talking about a superpower, a personal superpower of myself, I think uh, would sound a bit arrogant. But, <laughs> but we're asking you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, I, I, but, but since we're talking about of, 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 of Wilson Associates, I could, talk, I could tell about the superpower that we have all together. Okay. That's great because, I mean, we, we have been uh, on the business for 50 years and having 10 offices worldwide, mm. we have many superpowers. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, we, we have the capacity of work uh, with different uh, cultures and different languages and uh, to communicate between our offices and and that helps uh, to and I'm going to the personal superpowers to <laughs> enhance the the personal superpower of each office and each strength. Like there's some offices that are more strong in F and B. Some of the office, uh, some of the other offices are more strong in in um, let's say um, room design. Some mm-hmm. of them are for public spaces. Um, that's what makes our superpower as a firm and then after that going to mine i think i have um um how would i say i wouldn't name it superpower but maybe a <laughs> um, skill let's say okay <laughs> to read on the of uh, on the the mind of the client when they're trying to say something that they don't like Oh. 
So you haven't, uh, you are perceptive uh, at when. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not a mind reader. I'm not a, I'm not, <laughs> that's, not <here. laughs> that's not my, that's not my job. But, but, but so I, funny. yeah, but I could, I could, I could read it. I, I, let's say I could read in the, uh, between the lines when, 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 when you're exposing something by the faces there, when you're doing a presentation that, that I would say, I would say. Okay. So I like that. That what that means is that you're you're listening to everything. Everything that's being said and not said, right? Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is a, a really valuable skill to have and I'm going to say as a salesperson because as you are pitching a design presentation to somebody, you're selling that presentation to them and the most successful sales are the win-wins. And so as you're making your presentation, if what you're saying is you're able to perceive if there's some discomfort or dislike or something they're not happy about, whether they're expressing it or not, and you know you need to make some adjustments or ask some questions for clarification. Does that sound like what Ex you're... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I love it. Far, far, far away from mind readers. Yes. Far away from... Psycho-friendly. <laughs> Everybody in your office is like, wait, he reads minds? <laughs> wait, I, what, I, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's funny. Now, I love that you talked about the superpowers also of Wilson Associates. And you mentioned something that made me um, think of something. Is You said some particular offices, uh, locations might be stronger in food and beverage. Some might be stronger in room design. And some might be stronger in public spaces. Do you as a company, like say you're there in London and you come up across an opportunity and it's a strictly, a, it, well, not strictly, but it's predominantly a food and beverage opportunity. And that's what the design is going to focus on. If London superpower happens to be public spaces, will you, and Paris's superpower might be food and beverage, you know, do you actually then say, yes, thank you. We're going to take this project, but then it's sort of executed by another office and you move on to your what you do there or do you do the project yourself you run lead on it but maybe you come back and you confer with whatever office has that superpower of that how does that work exactly we collaborate between our offices and nice. uh, just to clarify it's something for an fmb coming to london that will be our superpower because we really like to do that okay <laughs> okay so we're just the... telling the universe out there that if you need fmb design wilson associates in london is your go-to <laughs> exactly by blue plate also and, and new york yeah but you're totally right yes if there's um um if there are other offices are strength for example more in retail for example if, if for example if a project that's a big shopping mall and retail comes to my office in London uh, I have to be honest that's uh, I can do it if I have the the right amount of people in our team but it's not our specialized at the moment let's say right so then they will look for another office uh, between our organization in our organization that could uh, take on that and obviously make us also part of it but yeah we we basically what we do is we look for support and strength between uh, all of the offices. That's great. That's great. So you don't have to turn the project down. Um, no, no. Right, no, no, right. You have no, that no, big no, no, no. network and that big support team with you. And exactly. you can take it on. And and just not, again, another detail that really doesn't matter, but I'm curious. So you are, so, uh, A, like I understand, because you're a small team now. In, in five years, you might have 25 people and maybe you can handle any project that comes to you, whether it's an F and B or like you said, shopping mix retail. But the thing is at this point in time with five people, if that opportunity comes to you in London, will you still be the face on that project, but it will be mostly handled back end by another um, uh, location that is skilled in that? Or will you actually look at that client and say, thank you so much for selecting design so Wilson Associates here and let me introduce you to the team that really handles that. How, how does it, is it, how does that go? I, I think um, we will 
Steve build the the faith, but uh, mm-hmm. it will be a collaboration right. between the two Behind officers. The but seats. yeah, we will. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's definitely because if they're coming to us, will be for a reason. So yes, the relationship make... is there, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. what I was thinking. I'm thinking. Well, you know, it's like, well, I don't want to work with them. I wanted to work with you, and you're like, well, they are me. <laughs> yeah. But there is something to the personality, right? They've been attracted to you for a lot of reasons, not just the body of work and the expertise of Wilson Associates. They're attracted it- to you personally. Exactly, and that's what we're trying to build. No, that we're we are a, a, a global firm, but our uh, with our with studios with our, our own identity. And mm-hmm. and sometimes, yeah, sometimes our clients are want to to work with a specific designer from an office, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we always uh, leave the the the, um, the door open, saying mm-hmm. that we're a big uh, firm with uh, with own identities for inst- uh, for for each studio. Mm-hmm. So now, when we talk about trying to attract the business, and I I would I don't know, but I would make an assumption that obviously a, 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 a large company like this will have inquiries probably all the time because based on reputation. But you are you also tasked yourself personally, Juan Carlos, with trying to attract clients and bring them into the pipeline? Or is it handled at a corporate level and they do all the rainmaking and they say, here, we've got another one, go do a meet and greet and see if you can close it. How does that work on a big company like this? I again, I mean, it, it's a collaboration of, especially now for a London office. I mean, I think the, the other offices that have their more already established and structured team, they have that uh, part, and we do have a person of of, of new business, and we're in, in constant communication between be, be, between that person and myself and our managing director that's based in 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 in, in Paris. But yeah, of course, I mean, if I go out to a, I, I do the PR thing also, and that's fine. And during this year in London, I've been attending to different events, and that could uh, pa- and that could um, gave me the opportunity to give some information to this new business development person. Uh, attending also to congresses, and we all work together, and put it all in a Salesforce, and it's um, a, a collaboration. It's not that I say, okay, I'm a designer, I don't do other things that just design. Obviously, I'm it's not my part, but I'm happy to do it, and right. I've been doing it. And and it's also because it sounds like what you're saying in there is that, you know, for even though this is a global company, 50 years old, London is a startup, basically, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you're <laughs> you're approaching it with that entrepreneurial spirit of a startup from the way you described hiring your team and to this, the way you have to cultivate and build the pipeline in London. So for designers listening that are maybe also having their own startup of a hospitality firm you mentioned going out to events and so forth how do you cultivate personally if, imagine if you were the principal of Juan Carlos design studio mm-hmm. in London and you didn't have this other layers of the collaboration between your Paris uh, managing director and the mm-hmm. home office. If it was just you, what do you? What does somebody do to go out and make contacts and try and build a pipeline of hospitality projects? Well, first of all, uh, don't be shy mm-hmm. and go to all these events and, and talk with everybody because it's in, it's really uh, nourishing when you get uh, to these kinds of events and get, get to get connections. And that's what at the end makes you makes you get the contact and obviously um, knocking on doors in a good way without being aggressive but um, at the end it's a small world and all these um, events I've been attending at the end it's the same people and it's about connections Mm. so uh, being nice to everybody and yeah what type of events are you talking about specifically are we talking about um, events that are industry events where mm-hmm. the operations managers and the owners of these um, F and B, you know, you know, hotels and boutiques are, are meeting. Or are you talking about society events where the icons and business owners are, you know, having a scotch? Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> I, I think there's both combination of okay. both. The first one, yeah, yeah, it's a both. Com- uh, it's a combination of both. But uh, the first one that you mentioned are the very, very important one because that's where you get to know. Exactly where the industry is going, you get to get the trends. I was 
I was in one of those events in Amsterdam uh, a week ago, which was really, really interesting because you got to see everyone. You get to see designers, you get to see developers, you get to see uh, chefs, and and they talk about the whole trend and things of what's going on. And it's really, really uh, uh, interesting. And, and then you make contacts, of course, that could bring business back to you. Um, it's it's uh, all about uh, that, getting to, to know these people and, and, and all, attending to all these events of what make could make your your business grow that would be my, my my advice of course and so the event in amsterdam what what was it specifically it was called it was called griff and it's um it was uh, more uh, focused into the smb industry and uh, it was uh i think it happens uh, every year and it shows it takes you with the uh, latest trends on 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 smb of what's gonna what what what's gonna come and what's gonna be the next uh, thing and uh, interesting enough everything uh, because you know we're all talking about the experience uh, uh, design experience for the client and everything and uh, what was very very um, nice to hear it was that everything's going to sustainability mm. into this part of the of the business so um that, that it's, it's more about is people are not just uh, concerned about the um, the the materials you're using on your projects mm-hmm. and, and 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 the kind of luxury you're using, but where is it coming from, and what uh, the the effect is taking on the environment, and mm. and that was also taking into the level of food waste, um, everything, and that's what new generations are looking on. I think it, it, it's the, called the Global Restaurant Investment Forum. That's are the, the whole thing for Griff. And uh, I, it's, it's an event that I will recommend everybody to go. Okay. And I'm not publicity out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so the thing is, what you're, you know, the interesting thing is I understand the experience that you're talking about by going to these events. And to probably, not that you need to only... Not that you don't go to more than one, but when you do return to the same one, whether they have it yearly or biannually, you do start to learn and meet the players and develop those relationships with them. And it does take two, three, four, five times before somebody might think, like you said, it might be a chef that's opening his own restaurant or a developer where the fourth or fifth time he's like, you know, that Juan Carlos, he's a great guy. Now we're going to open up a new place. Let's call him because it is built on relationships, isn't it? It is. It takes time, and it takes time. Mm. It takes time, and of course, you, uh, as you said, you're under the umbrella of a big corporation and everything. But at the end, and and, and you were talking at the beginning of the conversation, it's about the personal approach you have with a person, right? Mm-hmm. And how do you cultivate that that will bring you uh, to that client, and then you show if you're a good designer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so if we are, if we have a colleague listening who is their, a principal of their own boutique hospitality firm, they have to look at this investment as part of their marketing. They, you know, for somebody like yourself, I'm sure Wilson makes a decision each year, which of their directors go to which events. And that's, Mm. you know, a little easier for a firm that size. They understand the ROI on it. But when you're building your firm, it sometimes might be hard to justify that. But it's what you're saying it is, it's, it's imperative. You need to do it. It is an investment, it is, but I, I absolutely I think it will reward you in the future. Mm-hmm. Because, and also what I heard in there is it's a twofold return because number one, not only are you learning the players in the industry that you're trying to get the foothold in and developing relationships, but you're actually learning the trends and the things that are happening that maybe in your own little corner of the world, in your own studio, you wouldn't realize was such a hot topic and that should not be ignored because here's the thing you can say you could make the mistake of thinking well i'm i'm a principal of a boutique commercial hospitality firm i should say and you know 
sustainability is important to me, but I'm not so sure how it is for everybody else. But when you go here and you realize that the developers and the chefs and everybody, they're having the conversation. Now, you know, oh, it's not just me. It's not just an ideal. This, well, this tide is turning. This world is, ch- is shifting, right? Absolutely. And you get to understand it better. I was completely amazed on some of the talks and think, like, oh, my God. I mean, this has taken to another level that I would have never thought. Mm. And that makes you think. And that makes you, when you're presenting a project and when you're doing a new thing and you can incorporate that into your narrative, that gives you uh, mm. an A plus when, you, mm. when, when, you, when, when you're describing a project. Mm. And especially if you happen to be pitching somebody who on the other side of the table is going to these events and you don't mention any of these innovations. They're like, you don't know anything that's going on. I know more than you do, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have to be the expert in the room, <laughs> right? So, yeah. so interesting. How about if I asked you, could you think of something that has been a particular challenge, whether it's in this last year with Wilson and and building this London studio or just in design in general that you feel was a, a good learning lesson for you that you would share with your colleagues? Mm-hmm. Well, the challenging of running a design firm today, all, it's all the constant stream of communication and information of the media, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, how do you create a space that is not only make a difference, but offer some sort of engagement uh, with a with a user uh, or or create just a brand loyalty? There's there's so much going on right now and so much information on thrifting and thrifting. So, the um, I think like the biggest challenge is to create an emotional and leak between the space that you're designing and the user. And um, in a city like London that you get so much information, it's uh, sometimes it's overwhelming and say like, oh, my God, is there something new to create when you Mm -hmm. see so much things going on? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the challenge. You know, what will be the next thing that will be different, that will be surprising uh, to everybody when you get to see everything Mm -hmm. in a city like, like London? I think that will be the um, a, a big uh, challenge, and and also it's um, another big challenge is to um, when you're running a same thing for small team, is to keep them happy and engaged to mm-hmm. what they do. There's some sometimes there are frustrating times, right? There's a, there, there's times where the where 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 you know there's a lot of work and we're a small structure and things get stressed out. So um, how you, you you manage your team in order to keep them happy. And 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 and, and um, never forgetting the human component. I think that's there's nothing worse than a burnout team uh, because that will ultimately affect your deadlines and the quality of your design. So keeping that balance is it's a challenge. Do you have particular things that you do that uh, help and make make it known to your team that you appreciate and you value of them, especially under those tough times? Do you have advice for colleagues so that they could, you know, it, you're right. It is hard to keep a, a pressured team happy and moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, always, I mean, it's uh, when it's sometimes it's it's easy to to point out the the bad things on on a things that you don't like right so mm. uh but when you like something and someone from your team have done really really good celebrate it and and and, and make it part of it and that that's of course that 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 those 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 kind of uh, um yeah situations are 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 of growth for the whole team so mm. celebrate the the not just the the uh, just not just, not just point out the bad things, but just celebrate also the good thing and mm. the accomplishments, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, I, it's funny because it reminds me of when I was raising the kids. I used to always just say to myself, you know, don't be so quick quick to catch them making a mistake or not mm. doing something. Catch them doing the good thing, right? It's mm. easy to say you didn't pick up your clothes again, you didn't do this again. It's like I I always remember trying to remind myself, oh, you picked up your shoes, thanks. You know what I mean? Like that sort exactly. of thing. So yeah, you're saying exactly. the same thing. It's it, it's you know, don't just always be focused on the deficiencies, but take a moment when there is something whether it's big or small to congratulate and celebrate and acknowledge, right? Exactly. And try to make, I mean, there's all in this industry and, you know, there's a lot of really 
uh, intense moments where you're getting into the deadlines and people are tired. So, I mean, bringing up something funny at that time or trying to break mm -hmm. the tense situation, that always helps. And that always, uh, I mean, when, when something's really tense and, and then something, somebody do something that everybody laughs, that relaxes and lowers the pressure. Mm -hmm. And that's always, uh, it, it makes uh, the team move forward in a more... Uh, Relax away. Right. Though, Not to be overly stressed. serious, right? Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So I would imagine, tell me about what the workload is like when you can, ex what you can expect working in a firm like this, where the pressure is high, the projects do come with deadlines. I'm sure you face constantly deadlines on from the construction team, from the architectural team, from, you know, whatever it is, right? And, and from just your client itself. Is this an environment where if you're looking for a nine to five job, sweetie, don't apply? Is it on a regular basis that it's not looking at a clock and just understanding that it's the pressure of the project and maybe next month this project will complete and we'll have a breath how does that look I mean I, I've always uh, been in favor of people having their time on their personal uh, time on weekends and everything I'm I'm, 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 a per, I'm I'm totally against of overworking hours that are not necessarily it's more about being effective mm. of course there's times that you there's deadlines and of course you need to stay and you need to to work uh, overwork hours and that's fine and it has it's not new, right? It's mm -hmm. not always been in our industry. Mm -hmm. But um, I really try to manage and be as effective as possible uh, with a uh, with a time of uh, of the office mm -hmm. and and trying not to to overwork the people because at the end, um, I mean, you could push it to the limit for a certain time, but if you if you constantly do that the result is not going to be better. It's just going to be more stressed and uh, not good. Right, right. And so what you're saying is, is that there's always an exception, but the culture that you are, you know, creating in your office there is one that respects them as people, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from it. Spain, right? Yeah, well, I'm half and half. Originally, I was I was uh, born in Mexico, but I lived in oh. Spain for 18 years. So okay. I'm uh, Spanish at heart. I'm half Mexican, half Spanish. Interesting. Yeah. Well, either way, you're accustomed to having that afternoon, like that break and dinner at 10 o'clock, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'm not used that. Any I'm not used to that anymore. And actually, I don't. Miss, I really don't miss that part of Spain. I'm, I, I love Spain. Don't get me wrong, and I, I love that. Uh, but that really late scheduled part of it. It's crazy. Uh Compared to the yeah, it's crazy. Compared to the more um, early uh, time in London, yeah. I, I I like I, I I'm more into this part yeah. of it. So. I I mean, look, I've obviously I've only ever experienced it as a tourist, and as a tourist, it's awesome. I think it's a great yeah. plan. <laughs> Let's all just rest all afternoon and come out for dinner at nine o'clock. But I always <laughs> off this had the same thought: like, how do you work like this? Like, you know, how do you actually stay out till ten, eleven, twelve o'clock and get up and go to work? <laughs> Oh, and they do. I know. I mean, people work. It's not that they, they – no, no, no. Yeah, they, they stay late, but they work um, yep. like every other country. Yeah, no, but... I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I just actually recall reading that this is the culture, and I'm thinking, okay, right. You know, there's 10 people that do that. And then I was staying in Burgos, which is the okay. – Oh, my God, beautiful. I love it. They're so beautiful, right? And we rolled into town the first day at about probably – two o'clock in the afternoon and it was it was quiet it was you know there was people moving around and so forth but it was quiet and we checked into our room and yada 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 and I was like all right I'm hungry let's eat and of course I've read all the books that they don't go out to dinner till 9 30 10 o'clock at night but I'm you know it's 7 38 and I'm like it's dinner time go out there absolutely ghost town absolute ghost town <laughs> and honest to god an hour and a half later we come out the entire square was filled 9 30 10 o'clock at night with people dressed to the nines the most beautiful people on the planet dressed to the nines coming out for their weeknight dinner i was like this is bizarre <laughs> oh, I, I, that was summer right yes it was yes, yes exactly yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah that's the thing because i was always like why is it the dinner so late right. and every spanish said like because we cannot have dinner with sunlight 
So <laughs> until it gets dark, <laughs> then we eat. Is that what it is? So if I had been in there in the winter, it wouldn't have been that late, understood? No, still late. <laughs> yes, yes, right, probably right. It's just, it's, it's just it, like I said, for vacationing, it's amazing, and it feels so <laughs> luxurious and decadent. <laughs> exactly. But I'm like, for work, I'm like, wow. <laughs> so in exactly. London, you're keeping bankers' hours more. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes absolutely. I'm, I'm in the London time zone, uh, exactly, from morning to night. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, my goodness. Well, this has been such a delight getting to know you, Juan Carlos. I appreciate your, your spending your time with us and talking to us a little bit about this. It's a unique thing that you are experiencing. We've said it a couple of times that you have this um, opportunity to be part of this global company and the resources and the the, probably the colleagues that just are inspiring you and the mentorship that's available, uh, even at your experience level. I'm sure there's people in the company that have more uh, experience, right? And then at the uh, same time, you're like building this little startup within it. It's such a nice challenge. It is a big challenge and it's been great. It's been got good moments, not so good moments, <laughs> but I have to say that uh, it's been a great year so far oh. and I'm looking forward for a long period of time oh, uh, to keep growing this. Good for you. I, I wish you the best of luck. I'm sure you're going to be very successful. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Juan Carlos. Thank you so much, Luan. Such a nice guy, don't you agree? And I thought it was so funny that when I asked him what his superpower was, he was like, I don't, I can't say that. And he first had to say he was compelled to share the superpower of his entire firm of Wilson Associates, right? I mean, as a global firm, they are capable to work across so many cultures, across multiple disciplines, and to do them all well because of the talent and the skills of the many professionals that they have in their 10 locations. But Juan Carlos finally did say, that his superpower is that he is adept at reading between the lines when a client is sharing information or giving feedback. And that tells me he's a skilled listener, okay? Um, this is key in learning how to deliver what your client wants. It's also key in resolving conflict, and it's also very key in being able to close more projects, okay, so that you can keep your pi pipeline full, all right? And I find it very interesting that a man with this level of experience in both architecture and interior design with this high level of skill that he calls out as the major influence on his success, his ability to read people, okay, and his ability to have these high level conversations. And I just have to say that, you know, I imagine this is not only a, a very strong contributor to his success with his clients, but also, also with his global colleagues at Wilson Associates, as well as dire his direct team in London, right? Wouldn't you agree? And then the other thing is, too, that I thought you, you, when you go over to their website, you're going to see that the members of their firm that are featured on the website each have their photo and a bio, and they each have a quote that they have said is either the, a quote that they live by or their design mantra. And Juan Carlos's quote is, people ignore design that ignores people. And the quote's by Frank Chimero. I love this because I really felt like that he expressed this intuitively in many of his answers. And if you think about this quote now, people ignore design that no ignores people and then reflect on this conversation, I think you'll find that you agree with me. All right. So very cool when somebody is living their, uh, you know, true, true selves. Okay. Um, I want to share a couple of other takeaways that I have from this conversation with Juan Carlos. The first is he tells you to be creative and diplomatic when you're suggesting design solutions. And he also says you must know the why. What are the problems that the features and the benefits and the, the solutions that you are 
providing what what is the why behind them okay what is your what are your reasons behind the aesthetic you see it goes right back to people ignore design that ignores people he's telling you that if it's designed for the sake of design and it doesn't take in and solve the needs of the people who will live in that design then it's it's of no value right The other thing is that he says to actively acknowledge your team when they are doing good things and remember that they are people with lives outside of work. Juan Carlos clearly creates a culture that inspires rather than depletes. The other thing is he said when staffing a new studio branch with a firm of this caliber, he knew he had to hire people with skill and experience. He needed people that could hit the ground running, okay, because there's a lot of pressure getting this thing up and up the ground and running. Okay. But the other thing is, and this was what was so strategic about what he described, how he's running this firm and getting it going, is he knows that these people that he's hiring now are eventually going to be the people who will lead the different departments as he grows the firm. Okay. He called them the foundation of the firm. And so I thought that was so smart and so insightful. And of course, it just, it just speaks to his experience really. Right. How about this one? Go to industry events, connect with people. Don't be shy. He said, expand your connections, stay on top of what's new in design, what's new in style, what's new in product, what's, what's in innovation, what's going on, be on the cutting edge. Okay. And then the other last thing is if you're applying for a position in a startup type of environment, he said, you need to be prepared to be flexible. All right. You might be, and you probably will be asked to do more than just the exact strict interpretation of your job description. It's all hands on deck in the beginning years. And the thing is though, the team players that do this, they will rise and they will be rewarded as the company achieves its goals, right? So I really enjoyed this conversation with Juan Carlos. I hope you did too. And please don't miss looking at the portfolio of Wilson Associates. It is really spectacular. And I hope that you'll enjoy reading all the bios. I liked reading all the bios of the leaders featured on their about page. Such an accomplished talented group of men and women, really. Okay. Now, one thing before I go, I want to point out, you know, I have been harping on you to up your skills in sales and negotiation, because I know firsthand how having confidence in this area has dramatically affected our profitability at both Window Works and the podcast too, truth be told. And now we have Juan Carlos here reflecting on how his ability to read people, to listen and to negotiate with them is his superpower. It is important for you as a designer at every level in business, okay? If you're my baby designer, you might have less opportunities coming your way. And so it's critical that you close more of them more of the time so you can build your firm, right? And if you're a seasoned designer, it's imperative that you have the skill set, just like Juan Carlos said, you need to read their minds. You need to be able to deliver the right design project and that your negotiation skills must be nimble and graceful because you may have to convince some very high powered people that that what they want as a result might not be achieved unless they place their trust in you and your skills, okay? These are vital to be successful as a business owner, especially a business owner who lasts many, many years and is profitable. So if you need help in this area, if you need some insights, if you want some opportunity to ask questions, to learn how to be the leader in tough conversations, join me. Join me in my eight-week course, Sales for Creatives. All of the information is at salesforcreatives.com. All right. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're not sure if this course is right for you, if you are on the fence, email me and we'll arrange to hop on a phone call because you know what? You know me. I only want 110% satisfaction. That's what I deliver. Okay. That's my mantra. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, if I don't think the course is right for you, if I don't think you're going to benefit from it, I'm going to tell you it's not for you. Don't join. (laughs) <laughs> because I need you to go through it and say slam dunk. And if I don't think I can help you, then I don't want you in it. I don't want you wasting your time or money. Okay. So if you're interested, go to salesforcreatives.com for all the details. All right. One last thing. Today is Tuesday, June 4th. 
2019, if you're listening in real time, okay? If you happen to be and you're in the New York, New Jersey metro area, tomorrow, Wednesday, June 5th, I will be in Greenwich, Connecticut as part of the Greenwich Design District event. And I will be speaking at Putnam and Mason showroom. That's Robert Passal's showroom. I will be there for 4.30. Okay, Sandra Funk is going to be speaking earlier in the day. And then um, also earlier in the day is Alexa Hampton is going to be there. And then um, that night, 5.30 or so, we're all going to be having a nice networking party. So I really do hope that you will come out if you're in the New York, New Jersey area. All righty. Okay. My great thanks to Juan Carlos for joining me today. And my great thanks for you too, for joining me. You will make my day complete though. If you take a single lesson from this show and you do something with it, I hope you will move it from an idea to an action. Okay. Will you do that? Will you decide to be excellent? Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.